Good morning, Tacoma New Life Church. Uh, we are at the tail end of Passion Week, with yesterday being Maundy Thursday. Uh, the word Maundy derives from the Latin word command, and hence we get Jesus giving a new commandment on this day uh, to love one another as he has loved us. And that's something that will uh, speak uh, to a greater uh, magnitude after Jesus takes the cross, uh, ultimately dying for our sins and uh, resurrecting uh, from the grave. And so if yesterday uh, was Thursday, that makes today Friday. You know, I have to throw that out there because I know this whole quarantine life has got us lost and not knowing what time it is, uh, what day of the week it is, and so forth, right? And so uh, for Passion Week, uh, today is known as Good Friday. And I, I find Good Friday to be such um, an I ironic title uh, for this day because uh, Jesus will ultimately experience so much pain, right? He'll experience pain physically, mentally, and I believe that he experiences pain emotionally. And so we have to keep that in mind as we spend some time in the Word this morning because I do believe that knowing these things will help us uh, see uh, this scripture and really what this day is about with a greater uh, perspective and it will lead to a greater appreciation as we continue to look at a couple of pieces of scripture this morning. In our Bible reading plan, we are on day five of Jesus, our banner of victory. Um, if you haven't already, if you look in the description of this video, you can go ahead and click a link and it'll take you there. Um, you can catch up with us or go at your own pace, uh, but it's there for reference and you're more than welcome to join us at any time. But with that said, from that reading plan, there are two verses I'd like to share with you all this morning. Uh, the first one comes from Psalm chapter 103 uh, verses 2 to 5 and this is King David speaking here and uh, believe it or not I'm going to be reading from a different translation than the ESV I'm going to be reading to you the New Living Translation just because I, I feel like it helps us better absorb what uh, King David is saying but this is what it says verse 2 let all that I am praise the Lord may I never forget the good things he has done for me he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. And then verse 5 says this, he fills, my, he fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Wow, wow. Such a, a, a powerful psalm that we could all resonate with and find comfort and strength in over and over and over again right make sure that if you're if you're looking at a physical bible that you put a bookmark here like that you need to bend the page or whatever that whatever you might have right just this is a chapter uh this is a passage that is worth remembering i think we could easily call this passage the things that god does for us and if you were to call it that like you wouldn't you wouldn't be wrong However, I, I think it would be better suited to refer to this particular passage as all the things God's steadfast love accomplishes for us. Right? Yes, it, it is true that these are all things that God does for us. But I, but I believe that they can only or they are only accomplished because of the great love that he has for you and I. You see, out of, out of God's love for us, he forgives us. Right, because of his great love for us, because of his steadfast love, he heals us. And because of his love, he, he redeems us. Because of his love, he even crowns us with his love and tender mercies. And because of his great love, he fills my life with good things. All are the result of God's steadfast love. Without God's love, right? Without God's love, none of these things are, are possible. Instead, if we were to be without God's love, all we would get is what? Wrath. And so, major shout out to God for loving us 
first and that his love is not something that is contingent on the things that you and I have have done or accomplished but he gives us these things simply because he loves us and he loved us first and so what happens when we don't experience these things in our life right all the all the benefits that come with uh, life in in God like what happens when we don't experience these things like what happens when I don't feel like I'm experiencing his forgiveness and I'm still carrying carrying around that that weight that burden uh, of sin like what happens if I'm not experiencing healing and, and and I know for a lot of people out there whether you're at Tacoma Life Church or just randomly come across this video I know that's a big one for a, a lot of folks out there like what happens when I don't experience healing and I just have to say that when you don't ex when you when you don't when it feels like you're not experiencing these things in no way shape or form it, it, is it proof that God is loving us any less right because I do believe that even though we experience these things it's not God saying hey I, I love you a little bit less than I did yesterday Right? You see, it doesn't mean that God loves you any less than the person who might be experiencing these things in the capacity that you're hoping for. And what I mean by that is, it doesn't mean that God loves you any less if somebody next to you or you hear of somebody else that is, receives a miraculous healing or somebody who might be going through through cancer and by by God's grace it is miraculous miraculously healed and you are just you're in the same boat and you're wanting that healing and you just, it doesn't happen right it doesn't mean that God loves you any less it doesn't mean that God is loving us any less because I know that we all long for miracles to happen especially in that capacity right and we all want to experience his his great miracles at some point in in our lifetime and to be honest with you it may, it may not be in the capacity that you're hoping for and i know that can seem like that's the the cop-out answer right that's the easy thing to say as as a christian when it's not affecting you directly right it's easy to say those things when god's not answering and we think that it comforts us and yes it's true it does comfort us but at the same time, man, we, we, we long to experience such miraculous, miraculous things. But take a look at what uh, Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 33. This is what Jesus says. Jesus says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. Cool. But listen to this part. He says, in the world you will have tribulation but take heart I this is Jesus speaking remember I have overcome the world you see in the world what Jesus is saying in the world you will have tribulation you're, you're gonna experience troubles you're, you're gonna experience suffering man you we're, me and you we're, we're gonna experience hardships we might even experience what feels like disappointment and as a christian or as a follower of christ as his disciple as his sons and as his daughters we are not invincible and nor are we immune to trials and tribulations we face them like the rest of the world i mean jesus says it himself right there but what follows is important for us to understand it's important for us to remember and hold tight to. Jesus says what? Take heart. Why? Because Jesus, he says, I have overcome the world. Today is still Good Friday. It's on this day that even God's great plan to save redeem and ransom us all led to jesus experiencing what we're not just talking about death right we're not just talking about the cross but we're talking about the path that jesus had to walk that led him to the cross right you see it's jesus right who is the one who is capable more than capable to do all of these things right because of his steadfast love but yet he doesn't save 
himself from what lied ahead. Instead, he embraced it and took it head on. You see, the path that Jesus walked that ultimately led to uh, the cross, Jesus experiences what he experiences, hypocrisy. He experiences hypocrisy from those who once agreed with him. I'm pretty sure these are the same people that would say amen to the things that Jesus said and to the things that Jesus taught. Jesus experienced hatred from the very people who welcomed him. I mean, people who claim to Jesus all of a sudden are disowning him. People who claim to be followers of Christ are all of a sudden denying him. And worst of all, Jesus was betrayed by those closest to him. By Judas and also by Peter. And so when Jesus says in, uh, in John chapter 16 verse 33, In the world you will have tribulations. Take heart. I have overcome the world. You see, it is Jesus himself who faced these tribulations that he talked about. It is Jesus who saw them through. Right? It is Jesus who did not waver. Instead, he what he took heart. And because he over because he took heart, he overcame what the world threw at him. And because of what he did, you and I are able to take heart, not in ourselves, but in what Christ has done. You see, today is Good Friday, not because of what took place, because what took place wasn't good. But despite all that took place, God was still good. And I can just hear you guys saying, and all the time, God is good. And so brothers and sisters, this Good Friday, day five of our Bible reading plan, would you take heart in the things that you will face ahead, whether it be today or, or the days to come, or the many tribulations and the trials that you might face? Would you not be discouraged? But would you take heart, not in your ability, but take heart in what Jesus was already able to accomplish, overcome, and conquer because what Jesus did he did not only for himself and for the father but he did it as a benefit to you and so as a result everything that is said everything that is being resonated in Psalm 103 is possible for you and I because of who Jesus was is and is to come and so as you face today and as you get ready for tomorrow brothers and sisters let us take heart. May you go in peace. Amen.